Hey guys, Bearded Stick here editing the video. We just launched a Teespring store. We have a short sleeve shirt, long sleeve, and a sticker. They say, save the planet, ride a mini moto. Pretty cool design we came up with. Link for the store will be in the description below. So if you want to support the channel, either pick up a shirt or a sticker. It's much appreciated, guys. And thank you so much for watching. everybody armchair bikers on a beautiful September afternoon a little less than 60 degrees outside so a little chilly but here we are here is the Honda Grom 4,000 mile review which is what I'm gonna call it because I got 3793 so basically 3,800 miles on it so I'm just gonna round up and call this 4,000 miles and that is 4,000 bone stock miles have not done a single thing to this bike which is abnormal for a Grom because most of the time the first thing people do when they get one of these bikes is they do whatever they want to it they do an exhaust they do handlebars grips different tires maybe an intake mod you name I mean anything customization is a big reason as to why they're so popular and why we have referred to the Honda Grom as the pinnacle of mini moto, right? You've heard Boomer say that before because on top of just how good this bike is, you can really make it your own if you want to. Um, so as you can already tell, this review is going to be a positive one. But yeah, we're going to go into like what's different about 2022. Um, you know, they changed the compression ratio on the motor and they also changed the bore and stroke and uh, it's got a five speed now instead of a four speed uh, with the previous generation. So the five speed, a lot of people ask, hey, is the five speed really make a difference? Um, the four speed wasn't that bad. Is that fifth gear usable? How are the gear ratios, right? So five speed on this bike, I think is awesome. I think it's a huge step up from the four speed. Uh, the, the gear ratios on this bike are a little bit closer, uh, which for this bike in particular is a good thing because on the old generation with the four speed, you'd get into a lot of situations where you'd be in fourth gear and you wouldn't really be able to pull fourth gear, like maybe up a hill. And then you'd, but you, you weren't going slow enough to drop down into third because you know, you drop down into third and then all of a sudden you're almost bouncing off the rev limiter. So you just sort of need like an in-between gear. I would always joke around and say, man, I need like a three and a half gear. You know, I don't need fourth gear, but I don't need third. So the fifth, gear in this basically solves that issue because gear ratios are closer and you do not run into that issue as often there you go 37.95 on this bad boy 141 miles to the gallon is according to the computer on here which not sure how accurate that is but it's pretty close because when we fill these things up they're always right around or above 100 miles to the gallon. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about a Honda Grom or really any small bore motorcycle like this is that you can get so far on a tank of gas and when you fill it up, you're only, this is like a 1.6 gallon tank. So very cheap to fill up and you know, you can get really far on that, which is awesome. Especially with gas prices being still a little crazy depending on where you are. And it's always just nice to not have to spend as much money at the gas station, right? So. Well, awesome bike to commute on if you wanted to do that but in conclusion that fifth gear uh, I think is the biggest improvement on this bike and probably the biggest reason why you would want to go with a 2022 Honda Grom or a 2023 um, because I, that fifth gear is just awesome you know the old generation is still cool uh, you know hopping back on the four speed it's not like it's unrideable you know it's it's still a good bike and the four speed still works fine but that fifth gear is just really awesome to have and first gear is also a little bit shorter on this bike so like when you take off on this bike you can take off a little quicker first gear you know feels a little snappier because it's a shorter gear uh, than the first gear on the older generation Grom it's not as tall so that's cool good for wheelies too and once again fifth gear you can still get 
75 miles an hour out of it, which we have done like that, you know, that was down a slight uh, hill. We got 75 miles an hour out of it, but you know, most of the time I'm cruising around at, you know, 55, 60. But yeah, if you really wind this thing out and you get a little bit of a tailwind or you're going down a hill, yeah, I mean, 70, 75 is definitely achievable. Of course, depending on rider weight, uh, that is one advantage I have is that I'm not very heavy. But even Boomer, who's a little above 200 pounds, I mean, he's right there with me because uh, he also has a 2022 Grom. He's got the blue one. In case you're not familiar with the channel, he also has his own 2022 Grom. And yeah, we're, we're right with each other. He can stay with me. I do pull him on a few hills because, you know, because of his added weight, <laughs> I can pull him on, a, on hills. But if he tucks in behind me, we can stay together pretty good. And like I said, he can still touch 70 miles an hour, even being, you know, a little over 200 pounds. It just, you know, depends on the wind going uphill, going downhill, all those obvious factors. And you might be wondering, well, why haven't I done anything to the Grom, right? It's the first thing people do when they get a Grom is they throw parts at it. I, I just didn't really feel the need to. I mean, ergonomically, the flat seat is, once again, a huge advantage on this bike, in my opinion. I love the flat seat, and, and I love the fact that it comes with a flat seat from the factory, uh, because on the 2019 Grom that we have, you know, that came with the old cupped out seat. Uh, we bought a Corbin seat for that, which if you're not familiar with Corbin seats, they're a really nice aftermarket seat manufacturer and they make a very nice, uh, comfy flat seat for the older generation Groms. Uh, but this one comes with a flat seat from the factory. I love it because, you know, this is a small bike. You want to be able to move around on it. You don't want to be stuck in the same position. So there's no reason to have that cup in the seat. And there's no reason. You, most people are not going to be riding a passenger on this bike. So because like the old Groms had the cup in the seat and then the little like pillion thing that the passenger would sit on, you don't want really the passenger to be higher than you are especially on a small bike that only weighs 300 pounds like this you know barely 300 pounds um you know so the flat seat i think is great because even if you are going to run a passenger they're going to be at the same height as you they're not going to be sitting above you which is awesome because you know the bike's very light so when you load it up with the extra weight of another person uh, you don't want them to have a ton of leverage over the bike uh, as passengers do especially when they sit above you Uh, handlebars is definitely one thing that I probably should change. I've just been kind of lazy. These handlebars are fine and they they work fine. They're comfortable, uh, but they're a little narrow for my taste. Um, on the older generation Grom, I put uh, a set of Pro Taper bars, specifically the KLX 110 Bend uh, from Pro Taper. So I would probably do the same bar on this. Uh, and that just gets the bars up a little bit taller, out a little bit wider. Not that you really need all that leverage over a small bike like this, but for me, it's just a little bit more comfortable. It makes the bike look a little cooler in my opinion, and it makes it feel like a dirt bike, uh, which is just fun. You can pull up on them a little easier, and you just gotta be careful because you do have a ton of leverage when you put those bars on this bike. So very, very little handlebar input moves the bike more than you would think so you got to be careful when you first put those pro taper bars on and you go into a corner you don't really want to give it a whole lot of handlebar input because you'll end up in the ditch because <laughs> this thing requires very little persuasion uh, to change direction i mean even with the stock bars i mean you can flick this thing around no problem very light bike as far as suspension on this ground, once again, I'm a lighter weight individual, so I'm not the best person to ask about suspension, but the front fork is definitely stiffer than the prior generation. That's something that uh, Boomer Buzz has noted, is that uh, he, he likes the stiffness of the front fork on the newer generation ground as opposed to the old one. So front fork is better, rear rear is about the same, and, and once again, it's 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 fine, it's firm, it's not, it's not too firm and it's not sagging you know you don't sit on the bike even somebody that's you know 200 pounds they're not going to sit on the bike and have the thing just completely sag on them uh so suspension i think is adequate but once again of course if you find it to not be adequate there's always plenty of aftermarket suspension options uh that you can look into but from the factory still definitely rideable suspension nothing that's going to be like unusable 
And but this type of riding right here, I mean, 45 miles an hour, we're just cruising. This is a you know relatively straight road we're going, we're on right now. We're going to be taking a left here in a couple seconds and going to get on the twisties or a little bit of twisties. But this is what the ground was made for: is just bombing around around town, 45, 50 miles an hour. Once again, 55 to 60 is definitely doable, and that's generally what I end up doing a lot of the time. But when you're in traffic like this. The Grom is so happy at 45 miles an hour. I mean, that's what it was designed to do. All right. This is a little bit of a twisty road, but of course we do have cars ahead of us. But the Groms have always been, and this one is no different, always been smooth. The motors are smooth. Uh, they don't vibrate even at 8,000 RPM. These things don't vibrate. Uh, you're not getting tingly feelings in your hands. Your hands aren't going numb. I mean, they're just they're smooth motors. <laughs> so the sound of this bike, I think, is awesome. It's very quiet from the factory, uh, but it still sounds good. The factory exhaust, actually, on this bike sounds a little bit different than the older generation Grom. Um, and I've had Groms with like Yoshimura exhaust on them before, but honestly, the stock exhaust is just so nice because it's just it's quiet. It doesn't drone. It's not loud. And if you want to go practice wheelies in a parking lot or maybe explore a road that maybe you shouldn't be exploring or whatever, you're doing late night riding. You're not just obnoxiously loud all the time. And there's a, definitely a stealth aspect to keeping the factory exhaust and. I don't know, I just tend to uh, prefer sticking with the stock exhaust for that reason, you know. It's, you know, aftermarket exhaust, they sound cool at first, but after a while you just get sick of hearing this thing <laughs> just screaming its brains out all the time. So, uh, you know, the, the stock exhaust is, it still has a nice sound to it, but it's quiet enough to where you can ride this for long periods of time. You can hold it wide open for long periods of time and not just be absolutely sick of hearing this thing winding out to 8,000 RPM for whatever length of time you're on the bike for. Because, let's face it, we've all heard single cylinders with loud pipes on them, and after a while you just don't really want to hear them anymore. <laughs> so, um, if you're just going to use the bike on the track and you're looking for performance, then yeah, obviously that's a different story, but daily commuter, ripping around town, I don't know, I'd keep the stock exhaust on it, that's what I've done and I'm happy with it. And you know, that's somebody that's, I've had an aftermarket exhaust in the past on a different Grom, and you know, fun at first, but it gets old after a while. So in general, I think this is definitely an improvement over the old generation Groms, both ergonomically, uh, performance-wise, feels a little bit snappier on the bottom end, uh, which could also have to do with the gearing. Uh, but the main takeaways are like that five speed is awesome. The flat seat is awesome. Uh, I think the, the new tank work and the graphics are awesome. Uh, and the tank is nice and flat too, so it doesn't get in the way of your knees. Because uh, I'm 5'11", but I've, you know, I've got like a 30, almost a 34 inch inseam. Um, if you measure my true inseam, so my legs are, are longer uh, and The tank is awesome because it's flat on the sides. So my knees don't hit anything down here uh, So overall comfortable Nothing but good things to say about it really don't have any complaints as boring as that may be I just these bikes are solid They're smooth. They're reliable. It's a Honda and that's why we continue to say like hey Grom is the pinnacle, but the problem is they're just hard to get right now. A lot of people even leaving comments saying that they can't get Groms, they have Groms on order, and they're asking if they should go maybe with a CF Moto. And yeah, I do still think that a CF Moto is a really good alternative. If you're looking to get something in the mini moto segment and you can't get your hands on a Grom because they're hard to find, you know, CF Motos, you know, we have that CF Moto Papio, and that bike's also been fantastic. Um, if I had to choose, I still do prefer the Honda Grom, uh, just because it's maybe a little bit more refined, it's a little smoother, and I, you know, I just personally like it. You know, I've ridden both, and I just gravitate towards the Groms. But CF Moto is still solid bike, good alternative if you can't get a Grom. Um, and yeah, that's really the biggest issue with these Groms is that Honda just can't freaking make them fast enough. They can't get them to dealerships. They're on back order. 
So it sort of sucks, but hopefully that will change in the future. So that way people that want to get a Honda Grom and they don't want to go with an alternative, you know, hopefully, you know, they can get their hands on them, hopefully. But yeah, here's a perfect example. The cruise along, we're doing 58 miles an hour. Got a little bit of a wind. I'm not sure how much wind noise the bike's picking up, but yeah, got got a decent amount of wind and I'm still able to do 55, almost 60. You know, and that's, I'm not tucked in. I'm standing straight up. Or not, I'm sitting straight up, I should say. So I'm catching all the wind blasts, you know, in my chest, but I'm still able to maintain, you know, normal speeds that aren't too obnoxious for the cars following behind me, right? They're not, nobody's tailgating me, nobody's up my ass, you know. But all right, hopefully I can somewhat organize those rambling random thoughts of mine into somewhat of a review.